Okay, so here we go. Spoiler review for Days of Future Past. The best X-Men movie ever. So the movie starts out and you got a bleak future, okay? All the mutants are dead or pretty much dead. They're all getting wiped up with these sentinels, which are badass and scary. They can, because of, um, you find out it's Mystique's DNA, they can transform to adapt to any mutant. So poor Iceman, he's just freezing him, and then they get really hot and crush him and smash his ice head. I was like, oh god. And the new mutants of the future, because you know, you got, yeah, there's Magneto, there's Professor X, Wolverine, Storm, Kitty Pride, and Iceman. But like, Bishop, Blink, Warpath, and um, Sunspot? They were pretty cool, I thought. And Colossus, too. You finally get to see Colossus do something. He was in the first three X-Men movies and never did anything. He, like, threw Wolverine at the beginning of X-Men 3. He threw him at a simulated Sentinel, which... That joke at the beginning of X-3 now almost might throw some people off, like, wait... Yeah, so those guys, they're pretty much there to try to protect Professor X, Magneto, Kitty Pride, and Wolverine from the Sentinel. They get wiped out and it's kind of, you're like, oh dang, I, I kind of liked Iceman and he just got ripped to shreds. But then they can go in the past because consciousness is sent to the younger body to warn them. Cool. So how's that going to work? Well, Wolverine goes to the past and he's got the bone claws because he hasn't met Striker yet. So he hasn't had the awesome adamantium all over all his bones. Not sure where that's going to go after the end of this movie. But that first scene is pretty funny. You know, those guys coming in. It's like, trust me, I know how this goes. Because you're from the future? No, because of these. And they just start shooting them. And just heals. I watched this movie with my mom. And she was just like, are those muscles real? He's fucking ripped. And I was like, yes. Yeah. And Hugh Jackman just... It's fun to see that he's kind of like, think peaceful thoughts. Don't just run around chopping people up. Because you get that berserker Wolverine in the Wolverine. So in this one, he's actually a little bit, not exactly a pacifist, but he's more the peaceful talking out Wolverine and not simply reverting to his claws. Which is neat to see. It's a lot more Hugh Jackman acting and a lot less of him screaming and fighting. Although you get some awesome moments of that in this. James McAvoy is young Charles Xavier. When, when it first shows him, like, getting the needle, it's like, what, he's addicted to heroin? But then it's like, oh no, Beast, Tank McCoy made him the thing, gives him his legs, loses his power. In the movie, they explain it pretty well. He's hearing voices in his head constantly, he can't even get sleep or nothing. I'm like, yeah, that power would kind of suck. Once you're Patrick Stewart, it's awesome because you got a hold of it, but when you're young James McAvoy, it doesn't work out for him too well. But, you know, he gets teleported into the future eventually by going through Wolverine's mind and he gets to talk to himself in the future that's a great scene patrick stewart and james mcavoy are really good nicholas holt is hank mccoy beast he's really good because he gets the beast out beast looks a little different i kind of like how he looks in this one better looks a little bit cooler to me i wonder if they're gonna go anywhere with like hank mccoy likes mystique but also so does charles xavier and magneto do so it's not in any way like a love triangle or four-way at this point but because Nicholas Holt and Jennifer Lawrence are dating in real life, so I feel like if they did have a relationship in the movies, it would work. Because, like, Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, and Spider-Man had worked. But yeah, we don't go to X-Men movies for the romance. We go for the awesome action. And what do you get with that? Right away, you get some awesome action. You know, Quicksilver? Awesome in the movie. He's great. He's not in it very much. But at the same time, think about how many times Quicksilver could have solved it so quick. Like, at the end, Magneto is just like, I'm going to shoot all these guys. Quicksilver could have just been like, Quicksilver could have ran in, grabbed Magneto, ran away with him, and would have gave him whiplash and possibly killed him even, so he could have dealt with it quick. So they kind of usher him out of the movie nicely, like, yeah, you had your awesome scenes, you're really funny, people like you, see you later, because you're too OP, too powerful. That scene, though, where he busts Magneto out, that's awesome, that just shows, it's filmed really cool, too, when he's going around the room, kind of in slow motion, and he's just, like, pushing the guy's face, setting him to punch himself, wedging throwing a plane at a guy's head and stuff. Like, that's all really cool, and that's why I... Quicksilver is one of my new favorites, and he's going to be in Avengers. And Avengers now has the trouble. you got to outdo this Quicksilver, because this Quicksilver is pretty awesome and badass. And another funny thing I just realized is both Quicksilvers are kick-ass actors. In Avengers 2, it's going to be Aaron Taylor Johnson, and in this one, it was... Kick-Ass's best friend from the first movie, but not the second. I don't remember the character's name in Kick-Ass. But Evan Peters in this movie, he's really good. I don't exactly like his, like, silver leather suit. Like, he could have had a better costume, maybe. Mystique had some great scenes, like the one where she's with the Vietnam general. And she transforms, what, you don't think I look good like this? And just starts choking him with her leg up in the air. I was just like, awesome. I also like that Mystique was very central to the story, because, not to understate it, but in first class, 
a lot of her drama was like, uh, Charles Xavier doesn't think I'm pretty because I'm blue and he wants me to look normal and stuff, so, but Magneto thinks she looks fine as blue. And this, it's like, no, she's about to fucking shoot Trask in the face, and if she does that, it's going to set off the whole War of the Sentinels. So she's a lot more important in this one and directly involved, so I really like that. It's the most important Mystique's been in any of the X-Men movies. And also that scene where she's breaking out a few mutants from, what was it, Saigon? I was excited to see Havoc was back, and we get one part where it just, boom, he can shoot the laser beam out of his arm now because he had to hula hoop and then eventually had the little chest plate to shoot it, but now he can just shoot out of his arms. I get this, just fly him out of here. They don't be in the war, but they're not central to the story. Okay, you get Toad, you get, um, what are the other ones? Tattoo and Toxic or something? Don't know. And what, I don't think you realize in that scene, but you realize much later that the guy that was trying to send the mutants, he was going to send them to Trask Industries to experiment on them, like they did with a couple other people that it turns out were important in the last movie. You know, Angel, Azazel, um, Banshee's dead too, Emma Frost. They're all dead. They were experimented on by Trask and killed, so they're not coming back. Yeah, Emma Frost, that lingerie-clad beauty, she's dead. Not sure how I feel about that. But that's, that's why Mystique wants vengeance, because these mutants are dead, so she's going to kill Trask, played by Peter Dinklage, does great. I need to see Game of Thrones, because he's so good in this. And I know, he's a fantastic in Game of Thrones. I've heard it a billion times. I need to see the show. Like I said, though, his motivation, very lacking. It's just he's experimenting on them, because he's scared of them. I think Peter Dinklage said that his motivation is that he himself is somewhat mutated because he's a little person, so that's his problem. And because of that, maybe it gave him a complex of self-hatred and so wipe out all the mutants and whatever. Sustain your own future because he's very scared of them. Like he said, Magneto can control all the world's weapons because they're pretty much all of them are metal and Mystique could walk in as the president and order a missile strike, so they are dangerous. So he has a right to be afraid, so that's good enough motivation for me. So Trask is good. He's acted great, though, is the thing. And Nixon in the movie, he made me laugh one time. There was like, stand up, stand down. Like, for some reason with the Nixon voice and stuff, that really made me laugh. He sounded just like a dumb kid. But also, Magneto was involved in JFK's assassination, trying to save JFK because he's a mutant. Cool. I think I lost track of what I was going to say a while ago, but um, the general, the mystique, beats up, and then shows up again later when she almost kills Track, the guy there, you find out that's Stryker, and so Wolverine has a quick freak out because, oh shit, that guy's going to give me metal claws, erase my memory and everything, that, oh fuck, so yeah, that was also funny because then James McAvoy, one of his better moments in the movie, is like, that's Hank McCoy, I'm Charles Xavier, listen, you're on acid, someone gave you really bad acid, yeah, oh shit, that's Stryker, and then they, Mystique, Beast and Magneto end up outside and what it really added to the scene was the footage from like a 1970s camera That really helped because it made you feel more grounded into the movie like yeah This would be what it looked like if they're in real life It would be captured and it looked kind of crappy on these cameras But it was it was neat it tied it to the real world in a way and I can imagine back then like yeah This girl can transform into anyone and this guy controls metal, but they must have looked at Beast like oh my god It's a werewolf. That's real that, that's, I feel like, what that would have been. And then we get the Sentinels. And in the future, they're black and t transform to anything. But in the past, they're purple. We got giant purple Sentinels. They're all, like, silver and purple. But still, they're purple. They did it right. Then you get the final battle. The awesome moment. Magneto picks up a whole sports stadium and drops it, having the White House trapped right in the middle. And he sticks the Sentinels and all the cops and everything. That was fantastic. But just him floating with the stadium and dropping it. I didn't see that in any of the trailers. They didn't ruin it. Perfect. That's something you don't want to ruin because that's an epic moment. And then he rips the thing out. He's going to shoot them all, but really good part. Mystique actually takes him out and then she's going to do it, but then Charles Xavier has faith in her and she changes her mind, showing that mutants and humans can coexist. That's a really good moment. I really like that moment where Xavier's like, yeah, I have faith in you and stuff. That's cool. And Wolverine gets taken out because he's fighting one of the Sentinels and the Bone Claws don't really hold up against Sentinels too well, so Beast has to kind of be the hero there. And then Magneto just wraps a lot of metal pipes inside him and around him and throws him into a lake and it's like, oh, well, Wolverine was important to get them together, but he's actually not going to be the hero at the end. That's different than every single other X-Men movie where he is the ultimate hero. That's what I like about this. 
And then you find out the future things are good. The school's back, nobody's dead, you got Cyclops and Jean Grey back. That got me so excited because I saw Jean Grey was back and then I saw Cyclops was alive. I was like, they can finally actually do him right. He can actually be the leader of the X-Men and do cool stuff for a change in the next movie. I hope anyway. I like that. They wipe out history, change everything. That's really cool. Wolverine and the X-Men, they're all back together and they're not all dead. Yay! Screw you, fucking Brett Ratner. And I'm interested in X-Men Apocalypse. It's going to be set in the present or future or whatever, but are they going to go to the past? Because I want to see more Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, and McAvoy. I want to see Nicholas Holt as Beast. I want to see all of them in the past too. They're really good. And I'm interested to see where that goes because then you realize Stryker is being impersonated by Mystique and she takes Wolverine so I'm wondering is he gonna have his adamantium or is that gonna be stopped because Stryker didn't take him and do that anymore, I wonder. That's the most interesting to me is what's gonna happen with Wolverine's claws. Because in the future he has metal even though at the end of the Wolverine they're chopped off by the Silver Samurai and their bone. I'm assuming Magneto fixed it. That's what I'll take is just Magneto is like, here done. They don't explain the movie and I don't think they have to explain it now because that whole timeline has changed. He didn't even fight the Silver Samurai anymore. This movie also had some really good in-jokes. A lot of the humor came from in-jokes because when Quicksilver's talking like, you, they say you can control metal. My mom used to know a guy that could do that because in the comics Quicksilver's Magneto's son along with the Scarlet Witch. So that's a funny wink wink and I'm not exactly sure if it's just a joke like yeah in the comics it is or if they're actually implying Magneto is your dad, dude. I don't know because they show Quicksilver and his mom's watching the TV and she looks kind of like, hey, I'm not sure if she's looking at the TV like, oh my god, that's my son's baby daddy or hey, that guy's really bad. Not sure. They leave it a little ambiguous just for the sake of the humor maybe. I don't know. But I want to see more Quicksilver and if they make him Magneto's dad, I don't know. I don't think it... Is it really important or are they going to do a whole story like X-Men Apocalypse has to deal with the father-son relationship of Magneto and Quicksilver? I don't think so. So yeah, very excited to see X-Men Apocalypse. You know you get that credit scene where like skinny little teenage, he almost looked like Aaron Taylor Johnson to me. Just controlling Egypt pyramids, rearranging them stuff. You see the four horsemen of the apocalypse behind him. Cool. I kind of want a bigger apocalypse. I don't know where they're going with that anyway. Maybe he is bigger by the next movie. But I don't know anything about Apocalypse besides pretty much he's like Thanos or Darkseid. Thanos from Avengers Darkseid from DC Comics. Just He's a big bulky dude that's dangerous and badass. That's all I know. Those three dudes are all the same to me in the way that, yeah, Thanos is purple, Darkseid and Apocalypse are kind of blue grayish. And they're just big, bulky, they almost look like the Juggernaut and they're the biggest badasses of the franchises. That's all I know about on any of them. So yeah, comment below, tell me you thought of X-Men Days of Future Past spoilers stuff. Where do you think they're going to go with the whole ending Mystica Striker and that? If you have theories, I don't care. Talk about whatever you want. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. By the way, do you like my new camera? This is my camera. I know for the last couple weeks I've had a little bit better quality than a flip camera because I was boring a school's camera. But this one's actually mine. So this is the quality you can expect from my channel now. Is it good? Comment below, tell me what you think of that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.